What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be pulling the old uh, 600, 640 into the shop. It has been raining for three, no, five, five straight days here in North Carolina and it is wet. Uh, can't do anything else. So I got my old timey uh, feed bag seat cover. We're going to go down here and see if we can't uh, get the old 600 crank and get it in the shop. Alright, let's give it a little choke. Yes, I ran it not too long ago, so hopefully she'll uh, fire up a little easier. So. Like a champ. Almost every time. Almost. Literally, as I pulled out from the tractor shed, it started pouring down rain. So I had to fly in here real quick. I was going to get like a sweet shot of me pulling in. I was going to set up the tripod and let me run the tractor over top of the camera and all that shit. But it didn't work out that way. Oh, shit. I got to pull the four-wheeler back in here. Son of a bitch. All right. We got her in here. Got the four-wheeler back in here. Door shut. I mean, I'm not, I'm not joking. It has been raining for five straight days. It started raining Thursday, today's Monday. It is raining now. It is wet. Chickens don't care. But anyway, so we're just gonna do a basic service on this thing. I am going to pull the front wheels off and check the front wheels, spindles, and bearings. I would be amazed if I had a hard time finding bearings for this thing. I'm sure I can get them at Napa. So I'm not, worried about that I think I will pull this hood off take it outside and wash it uh, while I got it in here um, maybe this summer we'll get the pressure washer out we'll wash this whole thing now but uh, we'll service the oil bath air filter I'm gonna change the oil and then got the stuff to do it with change the hydraulic fluid change the oil uh, that's pretty much it on this thing check the wheel bearings this thing's real lightweight in the front so it does a lot of I don't have any weights on the front, so it does a lot of bouncing. I tend to drive it too fast and would go over humps and, and ruts and hills and stuff, and it uh, bounces and collides on the front. So we're gonna, we're gonna service everything we can uh, here on the front end. And uh, anyway, that's what's going on this week. So wish me luck. Hopefully we'll have better luck with, than we did have with the David Brown. All right, so I went ahead and took the hood off, and uh, it is on the verge of not being a one-man job. I'm not going to lie. Um, you have to take fasteners off the front. There's two under the bottom, or four, really. Four on each side at the front, and you have uh, nuts and bolts that hold it on to the front frame. And then uh, you got to lift it off. I went ahead and took the hood off because I have ordered new gauges for this thing. And so uh, it'd be easier to replace the gauges and I wanna do a little cleaning, straightening up in here. Um, but now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drain the oil and change the filter. All right, this thing's got a big square nut. So I just got a crescent wrench. Let's break it loose here, there we go. Drain pan. I can do it without drenching myself in oil. If you changed the oil and didn't drench yourself in oil, did you really change oil? It comes out a lot. That's big. Hole's rather big. Don't take long to drink. So we'll let that drain and uh, do something else. All right, we're gonna take the filter off here. I couldn't get it with my hands, so I can handy. 
Damn, you filter wrench here. Why is that so tight? Jeez. No wonder I couldn't get it with my hands. That is way, way too tight. I don't know where my dad got this filter wrench from, but it's pretty fancy. I don't like it. Twist the center part and it expands. But when you're got the ratchet in it, you're loosening it, it locks down on there. Opens back up. I've never used it before. It's pretty uh pretty slick. Oop. Still got a little bit drain from the oil pan. Let's see how much comes out here. And a whole lot. Filter's pretty heavy though. Feels like it's got a lot of crap in it. So we'll let that drain and get it cleaned up and put the new one on. Well, when I took the plug out for the transmission to drain the transmission, uh, some gear teeth fell out, which is always, always a good sign. That means your tractor's working hard and shedding pounds. Um, but for real, I, I'm just going to have to go with it. Uh, I can't really do anything about it. I mean, I guess I could rebuild the whole transmission, but I'm not going to do that. So, you know, you know, people live without teeth and then function fine in society for years and years and years. So this tractor is going to do the same thing. It's going to function without some teeth and be fine. Uh, more than likely. I have changed this transmission fluid, but it's been a long time. Uh, so, and who knows how long they've been in there. They could have been in there then and just didn't come out or they, I could have broken them within the last. I've had this tractor for well over 10 years, so who knows. But anyway, that being said, we're going to continue to drain the hydraulic fluid out of the hydraulic section next. There's three drain plugs, one for the transmission, one for the hydraulics, and one for the rear end. We're going to do the rear end too. I've got a 90-weight gear oil I'm going to put in the rear end. Um, so... We'll just carry on with that. And uh, a little bit of sludge came out. Uh, spray some carburetor cleaner down in there to kind of clean it out. We're just gonna go with it. Uh, I'll do the same thing with the transmission. I mean, the uh, hydraulics, depending on how, how milky it is. And uh, we'll just go with it. So that's, what's, uh, that's what we're doing next. So I put the plug back in for the transmission. I've already loosened the plug for the uh, Hydraulics here. Oh, well, I thought I loosened it. I could probably find a wrench to fit this. But I didn't. I'm sure it's gonna look much like the transmission did, pretty milky. Oh no, it looks clean. Look at that. That's good, that's good. Fantastic. I didn't hear any uh, pieces of metal fall out, so it's always good. That makes me feel good. The transmission fluid looks really, really good. Or the hydraulic fluid. Fantastic. So we'll let this get drained out and then we'll uh, not too worried about cleaning it out because it looks looks pretty good. So we'll just replace it, clean out the transmission and just refill this. So we'll pour some diesel fuel in here and let it sit the rest of the afternoon. And Clean that out. <clears throat> we'll drain it back out and then see what it looks like. All right, the diesel fuel's been soaking in here for a couple hours. Let's see what she looks like. Yeah, 
nice, pretty clean. Hopefully that'll clean all the gunk out of it. My grandfather would have put kerosene in it and took it around here and run around the field. But that's as much cleaning as I'm gonna do on this thing. I'm gonna let that drain for a little while, make sure we get all that diesel fuel out of it, and then we'll uh, drain the rear end yet. We still gotta fill it up. Okay, so it is the next day. Uh, I had some stuff I had to get done and couldn't get out here till the next day. And uh, so that gave it plenty of time for all that diesel fuel to drain out. And got my number one helper out here. <laughs> and uh, sorry for the loud noise. I got the heater going on. We're expecting a big ice storm tonight in North Carolina. So um, I got the transmission filled back up. If anybody doesn't know, the transmission has a plug right here you pull that plug out and you fill it up till uh, fluid starts coming out of the plug and then you fill it back in that's how you check it you take that plug out fluid should come out if not add fluid till it comes out so I got that done I've got to fill the uh, hydraulics the hydraulics have a dipstick right here that you can check Fill it up till it says it's full on the dipstick and it's under the seat. Right there, just fill plug for that. And then we'll get to draining this rear end and filling it back up. And then as far as the service goes, we'll be done, except for doing the oil bath air filter. Uh, like I said, I did uh, order some gauges, waiting on the gauges. And I'm gonna clean the hood and check the bearings on the front. Probably not going to film the bearing check. I'm sure you guys have had enough of hearing me talk about bearings, so I'm not going to subject you to that. So let me get the uh, hydraulics filled up, and we'll get the fluid drained out of the uh, rear end and get that changed too. All right, let's see what this rear end all looks like. Ah, you son of a gun! I already loosened it up. Then got the hydraulics and transmission filled up. Ooh, it's a little soupy. And a big chunk of something come out. And it's metal. So there's that. <laughs> it's always great news when a big chunk of metal comes out. Okay, we got the last thing to finish up here servicing the 600 is to refill the rear differential. Um, I thought I had some 8090, 80W90, but I don't. And so I, I was doing some research online to try to figure out exactly what goes in this rear end. And I think it's SAE 30. Uh, I saw a guy, I think he's Drag Racer 64 on YouTube who had a manual. He said, he, I think it said it called for SAE 30. But I got on some forums and was looking and a lot of people just put universal transmission fluid in it to keep everything the same. And they say, your seals in there leak, so you got to, you know, the shaft that comes all the way through the engine, all the way through the transmission, all the way through the hydraulics, all the way to the rear differential. And if those seals go bad, especially the one between the rear differential and the hydraulics, then it's going to get contaminated. And so, that being said, that's what I'm putting in it. Same thing I put in the uh, transmission and the hydraulics. And there ain't really no trick to it. Uh, on the left rear. It's got a fuel plug. Let's take it out, fill it up till it starts coming out. And then, uh, then you're done. So I'm gonna get this thing filled up and double check the oil and we'll fire up, make sure she works. All right, I got the rear differential filled. I got the oil checked, clean the oil bath air breather, air filter, and let's see if she'll fire up. About to smoke it out. Got my number one farm hand over there. <laughs> I 
She was uh, she's all right. All right, here we go. Let's give her a little bit of a choke. She cranks better cold than she does warm. It's kind of warm in here because I got the heater on. Come on, you old. Ah, I thought we had it. I think my starter is about to go out. Try this again. I don't know why she's being so damn cantankerous. I think she's flooded. We're gonna hold her wide up. Push start switch a long, uh, long time ago. Put a key in there. Key switch. And uh, well, there she is. So we're gonna call this video done. Uh, my uh, instruments I ordered, my new gauges and stuff, have been delayed because of the weather. They were in Memphis a couple days ago, and update says uh, delayed due to outside stuff outside my control. Whatever. So anyway, that's it. We got her serviced. I still got to check these bearings. Like I said, again, I'm not going to subject you to that nonsense again. Um, and uh, she's good to go for now, except for missing a couple teeth. But ain't nothing I can do about it right now. She's just going to run. I'm hoping the teeth that came out of the high, that came out of the transmission, or maybe from the starter, because I don't think my, I don't think the Bendix is retracting all the way. So. Maybe they came off the flywheel or, or the uh, gears on the starter. And the one out of the, out of the rear end, the tooth that came out of the rear end, which was this one right here, uh, I, you can see down in there pretty good and uh, it's just part of a tooth and nothing else came out. And I couldn't see the gear. I don't know if it's a ring gear or the pinion gear or anything in there that uh, it broke off of. So I can see about the first top half of the ring gear it all looked good. It looked really, really good inside there. Uh, even though the fluid was basically varnish. So anyway, if you guys watched, stuck around for this whole video, I appreciate it. And uh, look out for the next one. I got to do the 4,000 sometime. So appreciate it, guys.